Psalms chapter 73, verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Call Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baracha HaKodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means the other name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Baracha HaKodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, on the way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to our apostles and elder bishops, great millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity always in charity. This is Brother Mathathia from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on the morning. Shabbat Shalom. And we just read a verse, you know, out of uh, Psalms, the 73rd chapter. I'm going to read it again. It says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And it's inspired through the Holy Spirit, you know, based off of... Um, As you can see, I'm going to watch later. Um, Apostle Ron Live was just live. But uh, the elder brother out of Baltimore, he uploaded this clip, you know, um, with Bishop Nate <laughs> com completely, you know, dismantling, man, butchering, you know, um, uh, the book of Luke, you know, um, I think it's the 16th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, concerning the parable of Lazarus and a rich man and you can see Apostle Gabar uh, started to you know how far I got into Jewish Apostle Gabar lesson three minutes in off an hour lesson so you know and the spirit sparked me um so without further ado you know I'm gonna get right into it just showing you what inspired it through the Holy Spirit this is book of Psalm 73 and 12 once again behold these are the ungodly who prosper in the world they increase in riches now who is this ungodly that is speaking about it says what they prosper in the world and they increase in riches. Let's go from Psalm 73 to Psalm 17. This Psalm 17 and 13. It says arise, O Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So we're starting here to get the context, right? Because verse 14 is going to be our point. But it says, what? Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Now, who is the wicked? We know the wicked, according to Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh, Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. Right? So it says, from the wicked, which is thy sword, because the wicked Esau Edom is who the Lord used to punish the nation of Israel and the whole world, actually, you know, but specifically the nation of Israel. This is Isaiah 10 and 5. It says, O Assyrian, the modern day Assyrian is Esau Edom. America is modern day Nineveh, modern day Assyria, right? O Assyrian, the rod of my anger. And the staff in their hand is my indignation. You see, I will send him against an hypocritical nation. That's the children of Israel. And against the people of my wrath, will I give him a charge? So the Lord gave Esau Edom a charge to do what? To take the spoil and to take the prey and to try them down like the mire of the streets. And that's exactly what Esau has been doing unto the children of Israel. This is the book of Isaiah 47. And six, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thy hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient. Has thou very heavily laid thy yoke? Right. So this is what Esau Edom has done. <laughs> right. He was the whipping stick for our heavenly father. So going back to Psalms 17 and 13 again. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, because real soon the Lord is not going to have any use for this devil, right? Once, uh, you know, this this last punishment of our people is done, Jacob's trouble that he's that he's using Esau to um, to pretty much bring upon this place, right? With the manufactured, you know, uh, siege, the famine, <laughs> you know, um, he's uh, purposely um, collapsing the dollar. He's crashing the society. You know, ultimately, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is doing these things, but he's using his left hand to perform them. And at the end, he's going to disappoint this devil in his enterprises, man. Because the elect of Israel through our Lord Yahweh Shai will prevail. But it says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, 
deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Now, this is the point. Verse 14. From men which are thy hand, O Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, from men of the world which have their portion in this life. You see? And whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. That's the riches. The dew of heaven. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Because when you read Genesis, the 27th chapter, only two nations was promised. The dew of heaven. The governance of the entire world. Only two nations was promised that. This is the book of Genesis 27. And 28. Therefore, and this is the blessing that was given unto Jacob, right? Therefore, the most I give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee, which that's the same blessing that was given unto Abraham and Isaac, right? Showing you that Jacob was the chosen seed to receive this blessing. You see? <clears throat> so it was never meant to be Esau's blessing in the first place. In Genesis, the 25th chapter, it was said that the elder being Esau, Edom shall serve the younger being Jacob. Verse 30. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce going out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. Let me jump down to the point. You know, because this devil started crying, man, because he sold his birthright, <laughs> you know. Which wasn't his in the first place, man. Verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. So, same thing that was pretty much said unto, uh, uh, unto Jacob. But see, the difference is Esau's was temporary. And Esau would have his first. That's why it's written in the book of Second Edges. This is the book of Second Edges. Chapter 6 and verse 7. I started, yeah, verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sunder of the times? So, what is the end of the time, right? That's what he's asking. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You see that? So we're in Esau's portion right now. Esau is the ungodly that's prospering in the world right now. You see? And how did he get it? Verse 40, back in Genesis 27 and 40. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And he did that underneath uh, one of the kings of Judah. I forgot his name at this at this point, you know. But he rebelled against the king of Judah and set up, uh, you know, his own governance, right? Because before that, you know, he was a, um, a vassal unto the king of uh, Judah. But he would get the earth through the sword, man, right? So let's go back. So now we, we, we see what? From men who have their portion in this life, men of this world, Whose belly thou fillest with hid treasures, and they leave their substance to their babes. Let's go back to Psalm 73 and let's scroll up. Now let's go back to Psalm 73. Let's read verse 3. This is uh, uh the psalmist Asaph speaking, right? He says, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Malachi 1. Verse 4. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. You see that? So going to the parable of the rich man. <clears throat> yeah, it was Luke 16. Luke. 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. 
This represents the elites of Esau Edom because being clothed in purple is symbolic or it shows wealth, royalty, right? First Ezra 3 and 5, let every one of us speak a sentence, he that shall overcome and whose sentence shall seem wiser than the others, unto him shall the king Darius give great gifts and great things in token of victory. As to be clothed in purple, to drink in gold, and to sleep upon gold, in a chariot with bridles of gold, and in head tire of fine linen, and a chain about his neck. So it represents what? You know, being in that royal estate, man. That's what the, uh, the gold represents, right? I mean, I'm sorry, the purple. The purple represents being in that royal estate. This is, um, there's plenty more. <clears throat> First Maccabees 8 and 14, which was speaking about, you know, the, uh, the Romans. Yet for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. Because being clothed in purple represents royalty. Once again, uh, 1 Maccabees 10 and 62, yea, more than that, the king commanded to take off his garments and clothed him in purple, and they did so. <laughs> you see? And this is what one of them um, Grecian kings, specifically out of the line of uh, Seleucid, was doing unto, uh, I believe it was Jonathan, if I'm not mistaken. But it says, and he made him sit by himself and said unto his princes, go with him into the midst of the city and make proclamation that no man complain against him of any matter and that no man trouble him for any manner of cause. Uh, now, when his accusers saw that he was honored, according to the proclamation and clothed in purple, they fled away. So that's what the, the purple represent. First Maccabees 11 and 58. Upon this, he sent him golden vessels to be served in and gave him leave to drink in gold and to be clothed in purple and to wear a golden buckle. You see, so that's all we need right there. Showing you that this rich man, right, he's in a royalty in this world. He's in a royalty in this life. Is that's where Jake, Jake is not in that state. Even though you have certain Jakes like Michael Jordan, who's a, a billionaire, Oprah Winfrey, who's a billionaire, they're still not on the level of the elites because, of, matter of fact, we're going to, you know, get further into this, um, uh, that parable, you know, I want to hold it there and I, I just want to continue to keep going because we're going to get, we're going to get further on that point and further into the parable, but this Psalm 73 and five. So it says they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men, right? And we see that Esau, Edom, he's protected here in the society. That same protection, right? That Cain was protected with in the book of Genesis. He's not plagued. He's not in trouble, <laughs> right? Like other men are. Verse six, therefore pride can pass them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. You see, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. This ain't Jake. Therefore, his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. These devils are, 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 are born established, man. Right. As they say, they got old money. Verse 11. And they say, how do if the most high know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches is also written in the book of Job. Verse 12. This is a good one. Joel 12 and 6, the tabernacles of robbers, which Esau Edom is the thief. He's the robber. He increased that which is not his, according to Habakkuk, right? The tabernacles of robbers prosper, and they that provoke the Most High are secure into whose hand the Most High bringeth abundantly. You see? Because this is his portion. This is his life, right? It tells us, matter of fact, let me hold that there. Um, matter of fact, let me find this in Joel real quick, and then I can get what I was going to get. Um, 
How is it worded? And Lord, as well, I can remember, you know, what I was thinking of. Job 21. That's exactly what I was looking for. Job 21 and 7. The left side of my phone don't work. It's bugged out. You know, but um, and now I forgot what I was going to uh, do. Man, I forgot what I was what I was about to do. Damn it. Oh, well, Lord's will you bring it back. Job 21 and seven. Wherefore do the wicked live become old? Yea, and are mighty in power. Their seed is established in their sight with them. And their offspring before their eyes. Going back to that Psalms uh, 17. They substance they leave unto their babes. Right? Full, full cup is wrung out to them. Their houses are safe from fear. Neither is the rod of the Most High upon them. Right? Because this is his time of prosperity. In the book of Lamentations. It says that this was our punishment. But real soon, the Lord will discover Esau Edom's sins. So now we're about to come into Esau's punishment when our Lord Yahweh Shai returns. You see? Verse 10. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, meaning their cattle continue to produce. Cattle and angel will represent it, wealth. So their wealth is, is continually to increase, right? Their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto the Most High, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? <laughs> you see, so this is the mentality of uh, of Esau Edom, man. Right, because this is his portion. The water Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Job nine and twenty four. It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. This is his portion. This is his life. Right. This is his world. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? You see, so he covered the faces of the true judges, man. Right. The ultimate judge being the heavenly father, which committed all judgment unto the son, being his Lord, Yahweh Shah, who the world only called Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. That judges amongst the gods, as it is written in Psalms 82nd chapter, which are the children of Israel. And he painted the most high, our Lord, Yahweh Shah, and even uh, us, the children of Israel, he painted them all being what? So-called white people, man. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. You know what? This is his world. This is his life. This is how he's prospering. That's when Yahweh Shai, right, was tempted by Satan. How, do, how did Satan say it? Um, how did he say that? Give who truth. I believe that's how that's how it's not how it's said. Um I don't know how many times Satan. How many times Satan is written in the scriptures? Forty nine times. I believe it's Luke. Yep, this is Luke 4 and 5. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. So this is the spiritual demon Satan, right? Tempting our Lord Yahweh or trying to, right? 
for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. That's why whoever prospers in this life, in this society has to worship Satan because it's been given unto him, right? And he in turn has given it unto Esau Edom, which is his physical counterpart here on this earth. Let's prove that real quick. Oh, my phone and froze, you know, and the phone and froze. Lord will, it, it can, <laughs> you know, catch up, you know, with all this, it is this, this madness, man, you know, and then here it is. He, you know, the, the, the last part of the clip and then, you know, that's all we have is clips. So we don't really, you know, I, me personally, I don't know the fullness of, you know, what he was saying, the whole totality. But just that little part where he said that uh, uh, the rich man represents our people in a rich estate. So you saying just because you rich, you're going to burn in hell? Because when you go to that Luke. <laughs> right. What 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 wickedness did that did that parable? Did the rich man do? You know, just because he was rich. Right. But here it is. The Wadi Yaw Basham Yaw Shai. Um, Second Thessalonians 2. And 9, it says, verse 8. And then shall that wicked Esau Edom be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, right? So that's why you have to go through Esau, Edom to, to you got to succeed in order to succeed, man. You got to go through Esau, Edom to be established in this place. And you got to worship Satan. Because Esau, Edom is the physical counterpart of the spiritual angel, the spiritual demon, Satan. You see? And the earth is given into his hands, right? So we read this in, 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 in Job so we can see how the rich man fared sumptuously every day. So now let's go back to uh, Luke 16. <clears throat> Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man, which once again, this rich man represents Esau, Edom, right? Mind you. Because in Sirach, it speaks about, you know, what vexes the rich man and him knowing that he has to die, which is why Esau is trying to merge himself, you know, with AI, man. You can see all these attempts of, of, of immortality showing you that he represents the rich man. Uh, Sirach 41 and 1. Oh, death, how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possessions unto the man that have nothing to vex him and that have prosperity in all things. Yea, unto him that is yet able to receive meat so death is bitter unto this dude and he knows that he's at an end of his rulership that his kingdom is about to die upon the return of our lord yahweh shah that is vexing and bitter unto this devil man because there's about to be a trade in the places that's going to take place you know but let's go back luke 16 and 19 there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple so he was in 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 royal estate Jake is not in royal estate here, and we're going to get further into that. And fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Every day. You see? And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now, this Lazarus, right, is not speaking about the man whom Yahweh Shah raised from the dead. This Lazarus is symbolic, is speaking about the nation of Israel. When you go into this name Lazarus, right? It has a Hebrew origin. When you go to the root word, it's Allah Izah, right? Which means Allah means power. Izah means help, right? Helped of the power or the power has helped. You see? And it speaks about, uh, Um, 
Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob, uh, Psalms 146 and 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, his power. You see? Isaiah 41 and 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Thus, Isaiah 44 and 2. Thus saith Yahweh that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. So showing you that this Lazarus represents the nation of Israel. And it says, what which was laid at his gate full of sores. This is the book of Isaiah. One and five. It says, why should I start at four, three. Oh, man, two. It says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for Yahweh hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doeth not know, my people doeth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yahweh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. So it's talking about our whole nation. Even these that prosper. Michael Jordan. Oprah Winfrey. They had to succeed in order to succeed. They had to bow the knee to Satan. You see? So... <laughs> They in a bad, they, they, they are wounded, man. They are bruised. You see how there's a clear separation between the rich man and Lazarus, man. It says, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. You see? So when we go back to Luke, when it says that Lazarus was at his gate full of sores, this represents Israel. In that low estate, man. We read that Isaiah 47, we was delivered unto this devil hands. You see, this is his portion. This is his life. He's prospering. That's why Asaph, right, in Psalms uh, 73, he said, I was envious when I seen the prosperity of the foolish or the wicked. Because <laughs> these devils is prospering. But when you continue to read down, he said, when I went into the sanctuary of the Lord, then understood I their end. Surely thou hast placed them in slippery slopes, roughly paraphrasing, you know, uh, further down within that chapter. And we were in a world, I'm just going to speak for myself. I had those thoughts like, Damn, what, what, you know, our people is all uh, messed up and in a low condition. And man, we, 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 we can't get over the hump. But this devil, man, this devil's prospering continuously, man. Look, Edomites that I went to school with, Edomites that I, you know. But this verse 21 and desiring Luke 16 and 21 and desiring. So Lazarus was laying at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. We mentioned the, the spirit had me mention Michael Jordan. This dude is a billionaire, right? When you just real quick, man. <laughs> Look at this. How much Michael Jordan makes from Nike? Look at this. <laughs> According to Centuro Global, Michael Jordan has made approximately $1.3 billion from his Nike deal until 2020, considering that the last two years were very successful and profitable to, for the sneaker brand. This number is likely around $1.6 billion. The duration of Jordan's contract with Nike, with Nike is unclear, right? So now, from the time he signed the contract till, you know, it says two, 2023, till last year, he made $1.6 billion. Let's see how much Nike has made off of Michael Jordan. In the past five years, this is just the last five years. 
the Jordan brand has brought in 19 billion U.S. dollars for Nike. Though the brand generates close to 20 billion U.S. dollars, Michael only receives 5% from the brand. In 2020, it was reported that Jordan's contract earned him 1.3 billion U.S. dollars from Nike, the most any athlete has made from Nike. Michael Jordan brand earned Nike 19 billion the last five years, right? And he only made 1.3 <laughs> from the time he signed a contract in the mid 80s to now. That's a crumb. Let's type this in. Yearly. How much does no nope. How much does Nike make from Jordan a year? Nike's Jordan brand brought in 6.59 billion in revenue in the company's fiscal fourth quarter of 2023, which is 12 of Nike's total sales. On average, Jordan's shoe revenue has made 12 blah, 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 blah. The Jordan brand brought in 5.1 billion in 2021. It brought in 4.8 billion. So here it is. It brings in billions a year. Billions a year. Now, how much does Michael Jordan? How much money does Michael Jordan make a year? Michael Jordan's brand earns him 330 million per year out of 6 billion. <laughs> you see? But a nigga say, I'll take that. Well, no, that's a crumb. That's a crumb that he's receiving off his own name. You see? And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The dogs represents the heathen, right? A oldie but goodie. This is Exodus. Is it 21? Man, I used to remember this back in the day, which wasn't that long ago. Um, eleven and seven. I thought it was twenty-one and seven. Exodus eleven and seven. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that ye may know how the Lord, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shah, doeth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Right? So these heathen, these dogs, are not supposed to speak against us, man. But because the Lord, we sinned and rebelled against the Lord and he places us in his low estate, then these heathen have opened wide their mouth against us. You know, but these heathen are counted as dogs. In Psalms, the 22nd chapter, when King David was prophesying about the suffering of our Lord Yahweh Shai, what did he say? He said, dogs compassed him about. This is the book of Psalms 22. In 16, for dogs have compassed me about. This represents what? The heathen, the Romans. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. You see? So just a few precepts just showing you that the dogs represents these heathen. And these heathen licked our sores, man. It says, moreover, the verse 21, the latter end, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So that's them, them eating, right? Or they're being fed off of what? Of our sickness. They're being fed off of our low condition. And this is why they open up uh, their stores in our neighborhoods, man. Hair stores, nail salons. You know, uh, the crackhead chicken stores, you know, the fried, fried rice, the fried rice, you know, so forth and so on, man. We see it. Ishmael with the uh, with the corner stores, man, selling loose squares. Right. But verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, which represents the chariots, man. The elect is going to be, <laughs> you know, delivered into the kingdom of heaven. Abraham's bosom represents the kingdom of heaven. You know, the place of honor when you go into the ancient customs of sitting in someone's bosom. It represents, man, the place of honor. You know, it says the rich man also died and was buried. You see, the angels didn't carry him into Abraham's bosom. Why is that? 
Verse 23, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. But if this is a place where he's been tormented and burning, why is why is Abraham and Lazarus there with him? Showing you that this is a trading of places, just like how we were sitting at the gate full of sores, begging to be fed. This is what's about to happen to Esau, Edom in the kingdom of heaven. He's going to be the slave. What do we say that the uh, this is the book of Amos. Nine. And 13, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, that the plowman, right, the slave, the one that was working shall overtake the reaper, the rich man, one that was getting all the benefits. And the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. The Lord said that he will uh, take the cup that we have drunk and give, it into, and give it into the hands of Esau Edom. This is the book of Lamentations 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. See, this is why we were full of sores. This is why we're in a low condition because we were drinking at the cup. Right? That cup represents the Lord's fury, his anger. Psalm 75 and 8, for in the hand of Yahweh there is a cup and the wine is red. It is full of mixture and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall drink them out, shall wring them out and drink them. Salakia. It's what I was looking for. Isaiah 51 and 21. I start at 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. We see Israel, right? We see those niggers out there gang banging, man. Selling poison to their own people. Doing all kind of manner of, of, of wickedness and abomination. As a wild bull in the net, they are full of the fury of Yahweh, the rebuke of thy power. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Because we were what? We were drunken with the cup, with the Lord's fury. Thus saith thy Lord, Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, and thy power that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. So these heathen starting with Esau, Edom have been walking all over us. That's why Yahweh Shah told us that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Us as a people, but also our land. Look at what Esau is doing in our land over there, man. That's why if we going back to the Isaiah one, it says strangers devour our land in our presence. You see. So I don't know what the hell Bishop Nate is talking about, man. Back to uh, Lamentations four and twenty two, the punishment of iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity. O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. You see. So now it's time for Esau's Edom punishment, you know, and the Lord said he would do what? This is the book of Deuteronomy 30. So all those things that we suffered and we went through, guess what? These heathen got to go through it too, starting with Esau, Edom. Deuteronomy 30 and 7, and Yahweh thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies, that cup, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And it's going to be written in our uh, in our inwards, man. Beautiful. Back in Luke 16. In 23 and in hell. So now we know what that hell represents, man. <laughs> you know. Esau's this is going back to Psalm 17. This is his life. This is his portion. So he's in his heaven while we're in our punishment which represents our hell. But when Yahweh Shah returns, it's going to be flipped. We're going to be in our heaven and then Esau Edom is going to bear his punishment. He's going to be in his hell and in hell. He lift up his eyes being in torments. Just like how we, look, look, look what we went through. He's going to go through that as well. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. Psalms 149 to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Their first job, according to Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, is to bury dead bodies, man. 
They're going to be our plowmen, our vine dressers. We're going to uh, um, uh, um, number out the heathen to put them in the mountains to hew out, you know, precious stones and gold and silver. This is what's waiting for this devil. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And what does that represent? Because that flame represents affliction. Did not the Lord say he had chosen us in a furnace of affliction? So that flame represents what? <laughs> you know, the hell that he catching, man. And just like we read in Isaiah 47 earlier in the lesson that the Lord gave us into this devil hand. And what did he do? He didn't show us any mercy. So what's going to happen unto him? This is James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So that's what the uh, uh, that water, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. It represents mercy. This devil is asking for mercy, man. This is the book of Sirach. Forty three and twenty two. A present remedy of all is a mist coming speedily. A dew coming after heat refresheth. Right. So that's that. That's that refreshing, you know, drop of water, man. After all that heat and hell. You know, but there's another one that I'm looking for, man. Uh, shall not the do a swash the heat. So is a word better than a gift, but just showing you that 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 little water, <laughs> you know, is relief from that from from that heat, from that flame. So he was looking for mercy and no mercy is going to be extended unto him, man. Right. According to that James that we just read. Let's read this again. Luke 16 and 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. That's that Psalm 17. This is their life. This is their portion. Psalm 73. This is the ungodly that prosper in the world. You see that? And Lazarus, likewise, evil things. What did we get here? Full of sores, man. Desiring to be uh, fed with the crumbs. We shall go unto this devil for the for the lack of all things. We shall serve our enemies in hunger and thirst and nakedness. See. Those curses represents the cup that we drunk. So now this devil got to go through it, man. So we received our evil things. But it says what? But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So Esau had his rulership, he had his due of heaven, he had his portion, and now Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. And now it's time for Esau Eden to be tormented. Now it's time for him to be paid back. You see? And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So in today's society, we mentioned Michael Jordan. Here it is. Michael Jordan is living better than other Edomites here in their life, in their portion. In the kingdom of heaven, it ain't going to be so. It ain't finna be an Edomite doing better than an Israelite. See, this is what this devil allowed in his society. That ain't, it, ain't, it ain't happening with us, dog. Every Edomite spirit is going to suffer this slavery. And all of Israel will be comforted. That great gulf is fixed. You see, verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. And when you go into. uh, What was his name? Moses. Moses Amsher Bauer, I believe. <clears throat> I 
Yep. So this is the guy right here. Mayor Amschel Rothschild was a German Jewish banker and the founder of the Rothschild banking dynasty, referred to as the founding father of international blah, blah, blah. But this is the point. Look at his children. Nathan Mayer Rothschild, James Mayer D. Rothschild, Solomon Mayer Rothschild, Carl Mayer Von Rothschild, Amschel Mayer Rothschild. No. Yep. Who are the five sons of the Rothschilds? You see? There it is. Yeah, so Moses had five children. Or Amshel, you know. Yeah, Mayor Amshel. This nigga right here. You see? Five sons, man. <laughs> you know? You can't make this up, man. Verse 28, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. See, that's how you know it can't be talking about Esau because they got the Moses and, and well, don't, didn't Esau take the book in his hand? Don't it says in Psalms, <laughs> who art thou to take my covenant in thy hand, seeing that you put it far from thee and put it behind thee? I'm roughly paraphrasing. Psalms, the 50th chapter, around the 16th to 17th verse, if I'm not mistaken. Did not America say, right? Um, who said it? Ronald Reagan in the uh, uh, early 80s that the Bible was the law of the land? Huh? So Esau has taken hold of these scriptures, man. Verse 30. And he said, nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent, being our Lord Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai himself rose from the dead, right? But look what Yahweh Shai said in this parable, verse 31. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, which we know that they won't, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. You see? So even though our Lord Yahweh Shai did rise, Esau not going to hear this. He's called the deaf adder. <laughs> you know, he's the deaf adder that stoppeth his ear. But the point being is that this devil has taken on this book into his hand, man. Matter of fact, let's get that, man. It says the accuser of our brethren. So he knows very well that the Bible is true, that the heavenly father doeth exist, man. Psalms 15 and 16. But unto the wicked, the most I said, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes and that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seest thou hateth instruction and casteth my words behind thee, man. <laughs> you know, so what Moses and the prophets going to do for your ass, man? You know, so hey, I'm going to end it there. Lord will, I hope this was edifying. You know, like I was sparked in my spirit. You know, Lord's will, I'm going to uh, go back and finish the Apostle Ball's lesson. The Wadi Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Barachah Double honors to our apostles and other bishops of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shabbat Shalom. Oh my God.